Hello, beloved, and welcome to part seven of our series on Ascension to Pentecost. And as you will recall, last time we looked at the Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Might. And I told you that I didn't complete it. I didn't finish it. And I would love to finish it because it's so awesome. It's so amazing to understand uh, something what the Scripture teaches about the Spirit of Might. The fact that the Holy Spirit is the power of God. But not only that, the, the Spirit of Might or the Holy Spirit is visible in creation. He's, he's visible in the conception of Christ. He's visible in raising Christ from the dead. He's visible in, in working miracles. He is visible in making the gospel effective in the preaching of the gospel, the ministry of God's word. He makes that ministry effective. And then obviously as well, the last thing we looked at is that the Holy Spirit is the one that gives the power, that gives the ability, the enablement for us as believers to overcome difficulties. These are all things that the Holy Spirit does. Absolutely amazing. Now before we continue, let's just have a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that we can get to know God, the Holy Spirit, the third person of the Trinity. And it's in the name of Jesus Christ that we can come to you, the living Almighty God, and pray that you will reveal yourself to us more and more. And as we think about God, the Spirit, I pray, Father, please reveal yourself, reveal who you are to us. Reveal the Spirit to us so that we can understand more uh, about Him. So that, Father, you may be glorified as we exalt Jesus Christ through the power of the Holy Spirit because it's the Spirit that works in us to exalt Christ. Lift Him up so that you may be glorified. Oh, Father, we pray, please, and enable me as your servant to teach your people. This I pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. All right, so the Holy Spirit is the one who enables us to overcome our difficulties because He is the power that works in us. It's not our mental abilities, not our physical abilities, not even our moral conduct that enables us to, to overcome our difficulties. It is the Holy Spirit. It's not by might nor by power. It's by God's Spirit that we are able to overcome the difficulties in life. But you know what? love it believers are upheld by the holy spirit it is the spirit of might that upholds believers listen to psalm 51 verse 12 it says and this is david speaking crying out remember he committed adultery with bathsheba and then the prophet came to him spoke to him and then david wrote the psalm and in the psalm, he says, in Psalm 51, verse 12, he says, Restore to me the joy of your salvation. Listen to that. Restore to me the joy of your salvation. David acknowledges that salvation is something that comes from God. It is God's salvation. And David has this cry, Please, please, O God, Restore to me the joy of your salvation and uphold me by your generous spirit. Uphold me by your generous spirit. And, and David is acknowledging that if it is not the Holy Spirit that upholds him, especially during this time that he was going through, during this time of repentance, this time of of an inward turning of David, where he realized his sin before God, where he lost the joy of his salvation, of God's salvation in him. It, it is just absolutely amazing how David turns to God because he knows it is God that has to uphold him. But he understands it is, yes, it's God, but it's God the Spirit that is the one that is going to uphold um, David because it is the, the, the Holy Spirit that are, upholds believers. Beloved, when we, are, we have fallen into sin, when we are down in the dumps, when we are in fear, when we are in trouble, when we feel as if we, we just cannot cope anymore, 
Beloved, it is the Spirit of God that upholds us. It is the Spirit of God that lifts us up. It is the Spirit of God that builds us up. It is the Spirit of God that restores the joy of God's salvation in us. It is God's Spirit that does that because He is the Spirit of might. He is able to do it because He has the power to do that. But then, as well, it's not just that believers are upheld by the Spirit of God. Believers are actually strengthened by the Spirit of God. No? In, in Ephesians chapter 3, verse 16, we read, this is Paul speaking to the Ephesian believers, and he prays the following, that God would grant the believers, according to the riches of His glory, to be strengthened with might through His Spirit in the inner man. Amazing, huh? Absolutely amazing. This is what Paul prays. He says that God would grant the believers. He's not praying for himself, by the way. Paul is praying for others. He says that God would grant the believers, according to the riches of God's glory, to be strengthened with might through the Holy Spirit in the inner man. That God, through His Spirit, would strengthen the believers in the inner man, that, that, that it basically means in the spiritual side of man, eh? that the spirit of man, that the Holy Spirit will, will basically strengthen believers in the inner man, in the in their spirit, that they will become strong and, yeah, no, can't say powerful in the sense of just being powerful, but to be strengthened, to be strong in the inner man. But beloved, that's not all. We, we understand that Scripture teaches us that believers are enabled to boldly speak the truth of God's Word. And it's by the Spirit. Nah, it's the Holy Spirit that enables believers to boldly speak this, the, 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 the truth of God's Word. Because it's not easy, and especially in the time that we're living in now, Beloved, it's hard to speak the truth because chances are when you speak the truth, even if you speak it in love, if you speak the truth of God's word and, and you do it with sincerity, you, you do it because people are really on your heart, you know what's going to happen? You will be canceled in this culture that we are in today. You're going to be canceled. You're going to be cast away. You're going to be cut off. Because the problem today is that people don't want to hear the truth. They would rather accept the lie. They would rather live by the lie. They would rather ac agree with the lie. They will rather speak the lie. I interestingly enough, something that I've, I've noticed, when you, when you speak about what happened, for example, in this, th this, this heartbreaking event, for example, in that, that primary school in America, where the children and teachers were killed. It's amazing how people cry out and they are disgusted by the fact that a person can take a weapon and go into a school and then kill children, young, small children that are innocent, that has their whole lives ahead of them. They are outraged. They are so upset. They are up in arms and they just want to remove um, guns from everybody's hands they, they are you know, they just up in arms for at this well up in arms in in a, a symbolical sense now a figurative sense but those same people that are up in arms now about the the fact that young people children are being killed or have been killed in in this shooting of young people or i mean children small young children in primary school those same people just a few weeks ago have been outraged because roe versus wade that um or they call it roe v wade that is a, a judgment by the supreme court in america that allowed abortion there are states in america that allows abortion up to the just before birth they're not outraged about that they, they're not up in arms about that. They don't want to 
Um, remove all the doctors that are killing little babies and all the nurses that are involved in it. No, they are outraged that children, little children are being killed by a gunman that, that, is, uh, that has gone mad, that is demon-possessed, that is full of evil. They are outraged by it. But at the same time, they are pro the fact that little babies that are innocent, that has their lives ahead of them, that they can be killed in the womb of their mothers, who is supposed to be the most secure place in, in, in this life, which is in their, their mother. But beloved, the, the thing is, if you come to people and you share that truth with them and you say to them, listen, but you can't speak like that. You can't say the one moment, listen, uh, we're outraged and we are upset about the fact that little children are being killed uh, by a gunman, but you are willing that little children in the womb can be ripped apart by medical doctors. And it is law paid by taxpayers. It is just absolutely, it is under, you cannot understand that people can have these two, uh, two standards. And it's within weeks in America that this happened. Now, beloved, when you bring that truth to people, what happens is they, they won't want you to speak the truth. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want to listen to what you have to say. They will quickly cancel you. And let me tell you, it's only the boldness that comes through the Holy Spirit that enables us to be bold about the truth of God's word, the truth about life, that God is the giver of life and no man has the right to take anyone's life. Obviously, except corporal punishment. Let's say, for example, somebody murdered somebody else. Scripture teaches us that person has to be killed. But that's when government steps in and government kills not government makes laws that enables mothers to kill their babies, their unborn children. That, that, is, that is not biblical. So if we speak biblical truth, we need the boldness of the Spirit to be able to speak that truth loudly because we will be cancelled by the world that we live in today. Now Micah 3 verse 8, it says, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. And of justice and might to declare to Jacob his transgressions and to Israel his sin. And this is what Micah did. Beloved, he says, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord. You see, it's the Holy Spirit that gave Micah the power to do what? He says, I am full of power by the Spirit of the Lord and of justice and might. To declare to Jacob, to declare to Judah and to Israel, to the whole of Israel, to Jacob their transgressions and to Israel his sins. It is God's Spirit that gave Micah the power to rise up against the people of Israel and to speak the truth, even though they wouldn't want it or they didn't want to hear it. In Acts chapter 6, we read about Stephen. He, he was chosen as a deacon, you remember? And then the next moment he was arrested and he was called upon to keep quiet and not to preach in the name of Jesus Christ, not to share the gospel. And it said in, in Acts chapter 6 that they were able to resist, they, uh, they were not, and this is the Sanhedrin, the Jewish leaders at that time, were not able to resist the wisdom and the spirit by which he spoke. They couldn't speak against Stephen. Why? Because Stephen was speaking the truth through the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit enabled Sp uh, Stephen to speak to the authorities at that specific time. Beloved, we need God's power. And that comes from the Holy Spirit. That power comes from the Holy Spirit to enable us to speak boldly the truth. And it's the Spirit of God that enables us to do that. Another thing, beloved, that we need to understand is that believers are helped in prayer by the Holy Spirit. We don't always know how to pray. There are times that we pray and, and our prayers just, it seems as if, if we are just praying a little rhyme over and over and over again. I remember years ago when I was uh, at, at, I was still in, I think it started when I was in primary school. No, no, I was already in high school. I remember that I prayed Psalm 100 over and over again every night because I didn't know what to pray. And they, later on, 
I just know it was the Holy Spirit that enabled me to start praying, to start speaking to God as my Heavenly Father, as the Almighty God. I started learning how to pray Scripture, to take Scripture and to, to pray what I've just read and praise God for what He has revealed to me in His Word. And I remember how it, it, it became easier to intercede for people and easier to worship God and thank God and pray to Him because it's the Holy Spirit that enables us to preach, uh, to pray, sorry, um, well, to preach as well. Romans 8.26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses, for we do not know what we should pray, for as we ought. But the Spirit Himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Praise God for His Holy Spirit that enables us, that intercedes for us, because we don't know what to pray and how to pray, but He intercedes for us and lay, enables us to to pray. Uh, he helps us sometimes to pray right, but there are times that He just intercedes for us. And that is the Holy Spirit. That is the power of the Holy Spirit at work in the believer's life, enabling us to pray. Beloved, but there's another thing that we need to understand about the Holy Spirit, and that is that the Spirit allows the believers to abound in hope. The Holy Spirit, uh, it, 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 He works the ability in us. He gives us the power and the strength and the ability to abound in hope. Romans fifteen thirteen says, Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. That we may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. It is the Holy Spirit that enables us to abound, to have more than the hope that we need, to have more than sufficient enough hope. Hope in Christ, hope in God's ability, hope in eternal life, hope in our salvation, hope in the fact that we are going to be with the Lord forever and ever. Oh, beloved. And then ministers only qualify um, to be ministers of the gospel because the Holy Spirit is the one who enables us. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives me the power to minister to you otherwise i will not be able to do that luke 24 49 says jesus and this is jesus telling his disciples to wait in jerusalem eh, until they are endued with power from on high that's what jesus did said to them and then in acts chapter 1 verse 8 we read that they will receive power when the holy spirit has come upon them and they will be witnesses unto christ in jerusalem judea samaria to the uttermost parts of the earth <clears throat> beloved it's the holy spirit that enables us to minister the gospel, to minister the word of God. It's the Holy Spirit that enables us. And then the last thing that I want to say about the Holy Spirit with regards to the spirit of might, the Holy Spirit being the spirit of might, is that the instrument that God uses, that the Holy Spirit uses, is God's word. It's always the instrument that is used by the Holy Spirit in every aspect when we open up our mouths to speak the truth, it, it will always have to be the truth of God's word. When we speak God's word in truth and in power, the Holy Spirit enabling us, it's because it's God's word. That's why it comes with power. If it's not God's word, it's in our own abilities. It's in our own strength. It is when we speak the word of God that the Holy Spirit enables us to speak it with power, with strength, with might. It's interesting what Ephesians chapter 6 says, nah? when he speaks about the, the armor that we put on in the spiritual battle that we are in. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 17 says, Now take the helmet of salvation, and then what else? And the sword of the Spirit. The sword of the Spirit, what? Which, what is it? which is the Word of God. You see, the sword of the Spirit, what we use whenever we speak the truth, whenever we are involved in this, this spiritual battle, when we are busy with this wrestling, not against flesh and blood, the Holy Spirit enables us to have victory. The Holy Spirit is the one who gives us power. 
when we use the word of God rightly, correctly, when we use the word of God, because there is power in the word of God. Even Jesus, when he was tempted by the devil, remember, Jesus answered the devil by quoting scripture. And then Satan came and he twisted scripture. And he said to Jesus, but doesn't the word say? And Jesus then had to tell him, no, you're misinterpreting scripture. And Jesus always used the word of God because the word of God is the instrument that it will always be used, whether we're in the battle or whether we have to preach the truth in love, whatever we as believers are engaged in, we have to use the word of God. Why? Because the word of God was inspired by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the inspirer. The Holy Spirit is the author of Scripture. Therefore, when we use the Word of God, when we speak the Word of God, we are busy using the words that the Holy Spirit inspired. And obviously, the Holy Spirit will then use those words as the means to reach the hearts and the minds of people. That's what the Holy Spirit will do because He is the author. And, and it's always so interesting how people try to separate the Word of God and the Spirit of God, when the Word of God actually only exists because the Spirit of God inspired it. So, beloved, when we are busy with the Word of God, we are busy with something that the Holy Spirit inspired. So, if I want to understand something about God, I go to the Bible, and the Holy Spirit will lead me to the truth of what is being said about God. If I find that there's somebody that is caught up in, 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 in a spiritual bondage, if there's a stronghold that was built up in somebody's mind, I go to the Word of God because it's the Word of God that is, is there and the Holy Spirit will use the Word of God as the means to break that stronghold down in that person's life because it's the truth of God's Word that will destroy the lie that is built up in a person's life. Beloved, the instrument that the Holy Spirit will always use is the Word of God. That's the instrument. And may God enable us to know His Word and enable us to be able to use His Word the way that He wants His Word to be used. Because for us to see God's power at work, we have to quote the Word of God. Okay? That's so important. Beloved, that concludes this... Um, this message on the, the spirit of truth, uh, it, it was two messages, but wow, what an amazing thing when we speak about the spirit of might. Sorry, not the spirit of truth, the spirit of might. Wow, absolutely amazing. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much that your spirit, the Holy Spirit, is the power of God, that you work through your word. Whenever we engage with people, your word is the means that you use. Father, I pray, enable us to be very efficient in your word, to know your word, to study your word, to memorize your word, because it's the word, your word, the word of God, that is what we are to use in this spiritual battle that we are in. Thank you that your power works through your word. And thank you, Father, that <clears throat> we can know that you are the one who uses us, works in us and through us. Oh, may that be true in this week, uh, this month, this year, until you return. Oh, this we pray in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Beloved, thank you very much for spending the time with me. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May his face shine upon you and may he give you his peace. God willing, until next time, bye-bye.